Patients whose spinal columns have been severed in accidents can now walk again thanks to an amazing medical invention. Here are the details. The BBC reports that scientists in Switzerland have created a spinal implant system that is allowing paraplegic patients with severed spinal columns to walk and cycle. The breakthrough system revolves around a soft gel pack filled with electric leads that has been personally tailored for each patient. During surgery, the leads pack is implanted underneath the vertebrae, directly on the spinal cord. The leads are powered by a pacemaker implanted in the abdomen. A wireless signal connects the pacemaker to software on a tablet. The patients use the software to select if they want to stand, walk, cycle, or even swim. The software sends instructions wirelessly to the pacemaker inside the patient's abdomen, which then pulses electricity to different points in the spinal column. These electrical pulses stimulate the nerves that used to control the patient's leg and trunk muscles. This causes the muscles to react in a sequence that allows the patient to move their legs in accordance with the activity they selected. None of the nine people who have received the implant use it to help them walk in their everyday lives because that is too complicated at this stage. Instead, they use it to practice walking, which exercises their muscles, improves their health, and often restores a little bit of movement. Animal-to-human organ transplants have taken a new step forward. Here are the details. A man from the U.S. has become the first person to get a heart transplant from a pig, according to the University of Maryland School of Medicine. The pig used for the transplant was genetically modified to remove a gene that produces a sugar, which in turn triggers an immune response in humans. The surgeon who performed the surgery at the University of Maryland Medical Center said the patient's condition, heart failure, and an irregular heartbeat meant he was not eligible for either a human heart transplant or a heart pump, according to The Guardian. On Monday, the patient was reported to be breathing on his own while being monitored, though his surgeon, Bartley Griffith, said that exactly what will happen next is unclear. Last October, surgeons in New York said they had successfully transplanted a pig's kidney into a person, but in that instance, the recipient was already brain dead. Though the heart has been genetically modified and the patient has already passed the hyperacute rejection phase, a further treatment plan has been designed to work against upcoming immune responses. Of course, this is not the only ambitious project working to improve the supply of organs to patients in desperate need of them. Back in 2016, a team of scientists from the University of California, Davis, began attempting to produce human pig embryos in order to grow human organs in pigs. To grow a human pancreas in a pig, one must first remove the DNA that is responsible for growing a pig pancreas from a fertilized pig embryo using a technique known as CRISPR gene editing. A void is created after the gene editing, and human-induced pluripotent stem cells are then injected into the embryo to fill up the void. The human pig embryo, known as Chimera, is implanted into a sow and is allowed to develop for 28 days. Then the pregnancy is terminated and the tissue removed for analysis. Our hope is that this pig embryo will develop normally, but the pancreas will be made almost exclusively out of human cells and could be compatible with a patient for transplantation. Pablo Ross, lead researcher on the project and assistant professor at the Department of Animal Science at UC Davis, told the BBC at the time. However, the idea of growing human pig embryos remains highly controversial, with the U.S. National Institutes of Health imposing a moratorium on funding such experiments. Ross told the BBC the main concern is that the human stem cells might migrate to develop in the pig's embryo's brain, which would make the pig somewhat human-like. Others worry that growing human organs in pigs may lead to a new source of animal abuse, despite the fact that it may help to ease the shortage in organ donations in the U.S. And pigs are not the only animals involved in these kinds of issues. In 2019, researchers successfully grew kidneys in rats by implanting stem cells from mice. According to a paper published in the journal Nature Communications, researchers selected rat embryos that were genetically modified to not develop kidneys and injected them with stem cells from mice. These embryos were then implanted into the womb of rats that would carry the pregnancy to term and the rat embryo successfully grew kidneys. However, genetically modifying their genes to not grow their own kidneys caused them to lose their sense of smell and, due to this alteration, they did not suckle properly and died shortly after birth. This experiment led to concerns that growing organs from another species can eventually lead to organ contamination in the cells of the host. The paper's research supervisor, Masumi Hirabayashi, also stated that this process poses a larger ethical concern because injecting human stem cells into animals could cause them to develop consciousness and reproductive cells. 
controversial Italian neurosurgeon Dr. Sergio Cannavaro claims that a team of researchers at China's Harbin Medical University have successfully performed a monkey head transplant. And now Dr. Cannavaro has reportedly joined them in the hope of doing the same on a human. Italian surgeon Dr. Sergio Cannavaro claims a human head transplant could be successful. First, both patient and donor's heads are severed, an adhesive known as polyethylene glycol would then be used to preserve nerve cell membranes. Spinal cord stimulation could speed a potential patient's recovery. A negative pressure device would encourage nerves to connect. Canavero told New Scientist magazine Chinese researchers who claim to have performed a head transplant on a monkey say the head was cooled to minus 15 degrees centigrade without injury to the brain. The spinal cord was not connected and for ethical reasons, the monkey was euthanized less than a day later. Dr. Canavero is seeking money to perform the procedure on a 31-year-old Russian man who suffers from a genetic muscle-wasting disease. If it gets the go-ahead, the operation will take place at a hospital affiliated with the Chinese university. For the first time in the U.S., doctors have successfully reanimated a heart from a deceased donor prior to the heart being transplanted to an adult recipient. This procedure is known as Donation After Circulatory Death, or DCD. Jacob Schroeder, one of the doctors involved in the heart transplant procedure, told CNN that the donor heart was doused with a cold solution and removed five minutes after the person's death was announced and after heartbeat and circulation had stopped. Physicians from Duke University Medical Center then place the heart in the Transmedics organ care system. The system pumps warm blood and allows the non-beating heart to be preserved and resuscitated for a transplant. Once the heart and the heart recipient is ready, the donor heart is then transplanted into the recipient via standard heart transplant procedure. Schroeder explained that the procedure could increase the donor pool and the number of transplants performed by 30%. This would decrease wait time and the number of deaths of those waiting for a transplant. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. Chinese doctor Ren Xiaoping transplants the heads of mice by using a diamond-bladed knife to create a clean cut that separates the recipient mice's head from its body. Next, the donor animal's head is separated at the midbrain in order to preserve the brainstem so that the heart and lungs continue to function. Blood vessels are then connected using silicone tubes so that oxygen-rich blood from the donor body can reach the recipient head as quickly as possible. Spinal cord nerves from the recipient's head and the donor body are then fused together using polyethylene glycol, or PEG. The recipient head is affixed to the donor body with pins, wires, and screws before the silicone tubes are removed. The blood vessels, muscles, and skin are then joined together using tiny stitches. The mice have lived for as long as a day, a record Dr. Ren is hoping to improve on. According to a report in the Wall Street Journal, Dr. Ren hopes to use the knowledge he's gained so far in a 2015 bid to transplant the head of a monkey. A team of U.S. and Chinese scientists have successfully implanted human cells into monkey embryos, according to a study published in the journal Cell on April 15th. According to the research, the process began with the reprogramming of mature skin or blood cells into a stem cell-like state. Stem cells are the cells from which all other cells with more specialized functions develop. Citing the study, Science Alert reports that 25 of these reprogrammed human cells were added to macaque monkey embryos to form what is known as a chimera, or mixed species embryo. Speaking to The Guardian, research co-author Jun Wu, an assistant professor in the Department of Molecular Biology at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, said human cells made up around 4% of the chimera embryos. Science Alert notes that 132 of the chimera embryos formed initially. After 10 days, 103 of the chimeric embryos were still alive and developing. By day 19, only three chimeras remained alive, and on day 20, all of the hybrid embryos had been destroyed for ethical reasons. In their study, the researchers note they consulted with bioethicists and thus grew the embryos in a lab rather than a surrogate. 
This is also why they did not allow the chimera to develop beyond the 20-day mark. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.